Hello and welcome to I Help Make That. Last month, we did a movie about a naive guy getting into porn called Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star. Now, we're going to be doing yet another comedy about a naive guy getting into porn. This time, we're talking about Orgasmo with one of the movie's actors, Toddy Walters. Welcome, Toddy. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. But before we begin, let's just get the anchor ad out of the way. So, do you want to create your own podcast? If you do, try Anchor because Anchor is the easiest podcasting platform to use. All you do is sign up for an account, then you can post on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those platforms. So, if you want to create a podcast, try Anchor today. Thanks, Toddy, for coming on again. Yes, yes, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, reading your IMDb page... I know that this wasn't the first time you worked with Matt Stone and Trey Parker. In fact, I know you worked with them on Cannibal the Musical. You had a small role in South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. And you also did a few episodes of South Park back in the late 90s. What started this professional relationship with the two? Um, I was in 1992 going to school at CU Boulder, and I was there for one year. And I was in the performance art studies program, and I knew that there was a film program as well. And so I met some folks in the film uh, department there, and they we're all in the same class as Trey and Matt. And so I, I did a couple of short films with a couple of the different people who were in the program. Jason McHugh is one of them. We did one together. I was an actor and um, through, through that, I, I would attend the, the um, at the end of the semester, they would have a screening of all the short films. And so I was in a couple of them. And so I went went to them and one of the um, films that was shown was a trailer for a movie. And at that point it was just a trailer and it was called Alfred Packer, the musical. And there was sort of a buzz in the audience um, because this was just something that was unique and a trailer for a movie, for a movie that doesn't exist what is it? And so when I saw it, I was like, this is hilarious. And I want to be part of this. Are they making this movie? So then I just, I, I found out all the details and I was like, I'm going to be in that movie. So, <laughs> so I, um, I met uh, Trey and Matt because I think Jason got me an audition for, for the role of Polly Pry and Cannibal, what is now called Cannibal the Musical. And that's kind of how, that's how I met them. Yeah. yeah. Now, I heard about Cannibal the Musical that Moira Kelly, who was Mandy Hampton in the West Wing, she was a star of The Cutting Edge, the voice of the adult Nala in The Lion King. I heard she originally had a role in that, but was that but quit. Do you know if um you were her replacement? Uh, very likely. <laughs> I don't yeah, I mean, I think if they would have gotten her, they probably would have used her because she actually had a career. <laughs> yeah, from what I heard, I I heard she decided not to do the movie because it was a she wanted to have like a dramatic career. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Matt and Trey, <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. exactly right. Dramatic. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so that so then you did Cannibal the Musical, and 
how soon did you find out they were going to be working on Orgasmo? Well, that um, when I worked on Cannibal was, I think, 1993. And Orgasmo didn't happen until 1996, I think. And so during that time, um, they were they were still living in Denver and Trey and I were in a relationship at the time and they were um, promoting Cannibal the Musical. They went to Slam Dance and at the Sundance Film Festival. I don't know if Slam Dance still exists, but that was kind of like outside of the scope of what um, Sundance did. So all the like crazy movies would be on in that component of it. Uh, anyway, um, after a couple of years, they they started making the South Park um, pilot episode with a local Denver-based production company called Celluloid Studios. And then um, they were they had moved to LA for just a short time. They were taking Cannibal Musical with them and uh, sent them off. <laughs> and they, um, have, I don't know exactly the, what happened, but they didn't do orgasm until after, um, I think South Park kind of was taking uh, shape. Um, I'm not really sure, but Orgasmo was a little while later, and this is after they've they'd been there for a little while, a few months, I think, and they had met some people. They had done the original um, Spirit of Christmas uh, cartoon, the five-minute piece that is uncredited, that their lawyer at the time loved and became their lawyer because of this, and he sent a bunch of VHS tapes to all of his uh, celebrity friends and friends in the business, including like George Clooney and people like that. And that's when South Park got off the ground. So Orgasmo was kind of in between there right before I think they started South Park. And so um, they had been like researching the uh, porn business, researching the porn business in LA. <laughs> um, and apparently they'd gone to some shoots and things like that. And, you know, field research. And um, that's when Trey told me about this character, her her real name. She was a porn actor. Um, and most of the actors in Orgasmo, the female actors, most of them were porn actresses, except for me and one other. <laughs> but anyway, there was one porn actress. Her name was uh, Davia. And he, he had this idea for a character just like her, kind of, kind of like super busty and kind of stupid. And uh, I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> Not really sure why, but that was, yeah, that was how. And then I, I got that part, thankfully. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong but you said you dated Trey Parker briefly. Yeah, I was more like for about seven years. Oh. It was quite a while. Oh, so could you just, I hope you don't mind me asking, but could you just like maybe tell me a little bit about like what led you two to start dating? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was interesting. We were working on Cannibal the Musical. I had about three or four days of shooting um, total. And the first like couple days of my shoot like Trey didn't talk to me at all like he 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 wouldn't say a word I don't know I was just like there to do my job and I knew Jason um and so I I just remember at the end of the the last day of my shoot uh, I had heard Jason came over to me and said you know Trey is up for a, a student academy award in in Hollywood for um, a short that he created that they did like the year before mm -hmm. in the kind of simple South Park style, like super, super primal. Uh, and um, they, and, and Jason was like, and he, he wants to know if you want to go with him. Cause he has, you, he can bring a date. And I was like, but he never talked to me. <laughs> he never even looked at me. <laughs> well, okay, I, I want to go to Hollywood, you know. Um, so I really didn't even get to know him until we went to uh, Hollywood and um, we stayed at this nice hotel in Century City and 
he won this award and it was really fun and I got to know him a little bit and then that was the beginning of of about I guess about seven years of of dating and you know it was a, it was in your we're in our 20s Trey was becoming incredibly successful and um I think it just was kind of bad timing and it it just unfortunately we we stopped working together uh, after we stopped dating, but I always appreciated the output he had. I appreciated all the opportunities he gave me to to do things, and and here I am today. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm kind of curious. Do you think uh, the character of Lisa in Orgasmo was based off of you? Yeah, I think maybe. A little bit, yeah, because it it is like that character is a lot like I think what he was kind of experiencing in LA, and not the not in the porn industry, but just in general, just being becoming getting swept up in this world and and experiencing so much success that yeah, and I think he kind of like fought between like wanting wanting that person that's just going to be you know your person and, and want, needing to explore your career and take advantage of what is being offered to you. You know, there's no, I don't blame him at all for that. Yeah. But now tell me when, uh, when did you get started actually working or on orgasmo? That was in 1996, I think. And I hadn't moved to LA yet because I moved there in 1998. And I just, I worked, I don't remember exactly when, and I only had a couple days of shooting, but it was the first time I'd been on like a real, like Cannibal Musical is one thing, but this was bigger. It was a bigger deal. It was really fun. So many like cool, crazy people on set. And it was just really it was kind of wild and I got to meet some of the porn actors involved and I, wa I came on certain days that I wasn't filming just so I could be around and, and watch it because it was it was really fun watching Trey and Matt be hilarious and Matt and especially I thought was just so brilliant in this so hilarious and I had I just had a really good time it was really it was a really fun fun time for me. Great. What are some like really cool experiences you remember from a set? <laughs> well, so my character was is supposed to be very very buxom, and the idea behind the the idea behind it is that in every scene that you see Georgie, her boobs are bigger somehow, and so the costume designer. I talked about and tried to figure out the best way to to show them growing every time. So we went through some iterations of different types of outfits, and and we had this uh, prosthetic that the costume designer um, picked out for me to try, which was like what drag queens wear. Um, and so it's like a big piece piece of plastic that's kind of in on you, and it just it they were huge. And I remember I was in this dress and I had this my blonde wig and everything and I came out and it was a scene outside of the mansion uh, next to the pool, swimming pool at a party. And all these extras are out there and I walk out in this dress with these weird, just really weird looking and I, <laughs> um, breasts. And this woman, this extra was like, what? Is that a drag queen? You know? <laughs> So we ended up just having outfits that were like short, really short um, tops and that came up to here so that we could just like stuff. So I don't think it ever really caught on that she was bigger every single time because it was kind of hard to do. But um, that was really funny. And um, I never actually met Ron Jeremy, who was in Orgasmo, but... I did see him nod off a lot because apparently he was narcoleptic, which means you fall asleep 
on occasion, just like out of nowhere. And I, I witnessed that a number of times. <laughs> that was really, really interesting. And yeah. Yeah. So then, uh, seen as you were dating Trey at the time, like, did he give you any, like, did he, were you like the first person to read the script or did he give you any like sort of info firsthand, like what was going on with the movie or like, well, not necessarily. He, um, I did read the script early. I, I had opportunities to read other scripts that he had written and beforehand. And I did, I got, I, I got to meet like the, the producer friend Kazui um, early on. And, you know, I, I, you know, he was t told me all about the people he was trying to hire. And um, so, I, yeah, I was kind of there for all of that. And um, I didn't, I didn't uh, put anything else into it. Like I, like I didn't have any songs in it. Um, whereas at, in South Park, I, I had two or three songs that I wrote for the series four little parts of the series. And I wrote a song that was in basketball, um, which Trey was able to get into the movie, which was amazing. Um, but other than that, my, my input of orgasmo was just creatively. Okay. I think I, I understand, but then were you, you know, surprised that he was able to like actually find producers to make this like seemingly crazy movie? Yes. Yeah, it it really just doesn't make any sense that movie was ever made. And it's, but it's just, a, I really think what opened the doors for them was the Spirit of Christmas video. I mean, that changed the trajectory of everything. And because of that, they were able to secure this funding because I think that people just saw this gold mine, this you know, creative collaboration between the two and the genius behind what they do. And I'm not saying that Orgasmo is a genius movie because it's not, not, but the, their creative juice is what people, people wanted to um, encourage. And I think it's, it's brilliant. And I also think that Orgasmo is kind of the, kind of a prototype for uh, Book of Mormon, because you know, <laughs> yeah, I know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, before we just delve into Orgasmo as a movie, like I'm just curious, what was what was the premiere of Orgasmo like? Oh, well, that <laughs> I don't remember where the premiere was. I don't remember where what movie theater it was held at, but I remember the party was at. Hugh Hefner's Playboy Mansion. I thought so. <laughs> and so that was crazy. And um, it was cool. I'd never been there before. Um, I guess part of what happens when you rent out the Playboy Mansion is that you can pay a little bit more money for an appearance by Hugh Hefner. You know, he'll come out in the robe and like wave like the queen for a minute, which is exactly what he did. Um, but Joni Mitchell was there. Uh, Gabriel Byrne was there. Um, Tommy Lee was there. And Metallica played, like, literally in front of like, less than 50 people. I don't know. There wasn't, there wasn't, like, a ton, huge number of people there. But so I got to sit, like, right in front of Metallica. It was incredible. <laughs> well, all that for, well, all that for a silly, low-budget comedy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How much do you think Metallica cost? I know. Probably more than the budget of the movie. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, but just saying, going back to your comment that it's a prototype for or get for um, Book of Mormon, I can definitely see that with the Mormon protagonist, you know, getting into sort of a sort of out of his comfort zone into sort of a world he's never been to before um i i feel like it's in general more of a prototype 
for Matt and Trey and their style, you know, in general, like the silly comedy is there. The satire isn't quite as sharp as their later works. And I, but that being said, it is still at least for the first half, a kind of entertaining and amusing movie. Um, If I'm going to be honest, I think it does kind of lose a bit of steam halfway through. Uh, But Mm -hmm. I will also say this, Joe is a much more likable and relatable protagonist than the other movie about porn I've covered, uh, Bucky Larkin. (laughs) (laughs) How many are there? (laughs) Uh, As in movies I've covered about porn or movies about porn? Yeah, about someone going into inadvertently entering the porn business. Let's see. There's this, Bucky Larson. Um. Well, Boogie Nights. I think that's oh, like yeah. that's like the biggest one. Yeah. There's actually another one that came out, I think, 20, just recently. It's called Pleasure, but it's actually about a woman entering the porn business and realizing sort of just how misogynistic and rapey it really is. Um, yeah, that was a, a really good one. I'd suggest that. Okay. Um, yeah, that came out in like 2021. Oh, it's on Showtime. Ooh. If you have that. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, um, I'm sure there are others because I think there is just something kind of appealing to people about sort of the juxtaposition of a naive dreamer and something as seedy and seemingly gross as the porn industry. Yeah. Definitely. And I think... It, I don't know, I think there's just sort of, in general, just a love of juxtaposing two different things. Definitely. And, you know, making movies about that. Uh-huh, for sure. Yeah, which is why there's probably been a few sort of naive dreamers get into porn. Or just not even into porn, like naive dreamers get into show business and realize the realities about yeah entertainment industry yeah uh but but you know back to madden trey like i think i i think it works better as a i think this movie does work better as a silly comedy because the satire is just kind of simple and it's nothing you've never heard before while i think in their later works or even just basketball which was a year later i think their attempts at satire got a bit smarter a bit yeah a bit yeah. more than just like porn just a bit more than just like porn is seedy and bad and the people in it are gross yeah yeah exactly i wonder for basketball who it was directed by the directors of airplane yeah right and i mm-hmm. i know that matt and trey punched up the script for them Mm-hmm. And so I don't really remember that movie at all, but I wonder if they made it smarter. Yeah, they did. Cause they kind of like, I think they kind of did because they added like this social commentary about how sports have become over commercialized to an obnoxious degree. And like, mm-hmm. I'll admit, I just vaguely remember that movie, but it's like, just seems like they like, um, it was trying to be more satirical than I felt like Orgasmo was really being. Like, I feel like Orgasmo mm-hmm. was just trying to be like a silly comedy first and foremost. Yeah. I think that, like, right, like, nowadays we think more of Matt and Trey as, like, fart jokes with, but has they have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But, like, back then, it was really just fart jokes. And fart jokes. <laughs> and more fart jokes. Yes. So many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, thank you for coming on to the show, Toddy. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Oh. Well, there there is a movie that that I was in um that shot in Colorado, and that's where I live now. I live in the mountains. And um 
It was shot in 2016, so it's been a minute, but I was really excited about it. Uh, it's called Stadium Anthems, and you can find it on Amazon. Um, but what I like about it is that most of the actors in the movie are uh, from Colorado. There's a couple there's a couple that are not. One is actually um, a really successful porn empire founder and oh, porn actor. Really? Uh -huh. um, is that coincidental? Yeah, I know. It's really funny. This this woman, and I I, I don't remember her name, but obviously that she's, she's in the film. She's hilarious. And um, this film is kind of, it's silly, but it's also super... It's like a highly intellectual fart joke. You know what I mean? It really is. It's 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 good. It's very heady. Mm -hmm. It's very. There's a lot going on. Um, the director Scott Douglas Brown, who's from LA, but he lives he's lived in Colorado for a long time. He wrote it. He spent like a bunch of years writing it and um, started out like three hour movie and then had to cut it down a lot and hired. He had like probably 15 extra characters in the film that he shot that, that didn't end up in the film just because of the convoluted nature of what he was trying to pull off. But I, I sang on about 20 plus songs on, on that uh, soundtrack. And I also wrote and um, got produced a bunch of my own songs that are in it as well. So it's kind of like a, pay on to to me uh, and my voice because my voice is all over it and it was really fun to do it was so much fun and so um and it's called stadium anthems i think you might i don't know if you might like it because <laughs> you're you're a real filmophile <laughs> no i'll check it out but um anyway thank you toddy for coming on to the show yeah thanks kevin thank you very much for yeah, having you're me yeah you're welcome Anyway, that was I Help Make That. And now you're a man.